Good evening, everyone. Welcome to our evening connection, a weekly connection, um, through, obviously, the wisdom that is revealed to us every week. We also have, as, as we learn, the concept that everybody, if you study Kabbalah, you know what it means, new moon. Every 30 days, there's a, the birth of the new moon. That's why we get together tonight and... Uh, and share wisdom about the, the, the secrets from, from, from the new moon that is, is coming. So this is happening uh, tonight. Now we're entering to the month of Shvat, the month of Aquarius. Uh, we're going to share more secrets, you know, from the new moon if you're watching it uh, 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 earlier or later on. That is the month where... What we see right now, these are the, the, the month of, of Aquarius. It's where right now it's still in the middle of the exile of the Israelites. They are in exile in Egypt. And if you remember, when we said, what is, what is, what is Egypt? Egypt is the word Mitzrayim. Mitzrayim. Mitzrayim is obviously literally Egypt. But what it mean, it mean a narrow, right? Smallness. And this is the exile that we're talking about. It's not the exile that happened 4,000 years ago. It's the exile that every day we're getting into four minutes, four days, four hours into an exile from outside, from uh, exile from ourselves. We all have what we call the evil inclination. And the evil inclination, if you, if you said the word uh, evil inclination, it's called yetzer. It's the same word as Mitzrayim. The, the urge, the, 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 it's an inclination, but it can be good, it can be bad. So, obviously, what you put after, evil or positive inclination, right? That's what we want to. But when the Egypt sits on us, Meitzer, which is like, keep, the, keep us hostage, keep us, you know, under siege. That's what it means, Mitzrayim. Mitzrayim is that you're under the siege of your negative side. It's going to completely have a holding on you. This is what we're dealing, this is what is coming out right now. This is the month of, of Aquarius that all the, the Egypt, the, 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 you know, the, the, the plagues and all of that, right? In this month, right? We have in this, in this month as well, a huge cleansing of what we call the Shovavim. Shovavim is... You know, uh, um, the time where we're cleansing a wrong or misconduct, in a way, behavior, physically, right? Using our physical interaction, obviously, also, if, if somebody is, uh, is using his, 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 his body for the sake of only pleasure, this is the time we're cleansing it, in these six weeks, uh, uh, in the midst of them, we have the, the, the month of uh, Aquarius. What is the secret of how can we remove ourselves from the claws or the, the gripping, the holding, the, the strangle of the negative side, the evil inclination, which is Mitzrayim, that sits and puts you in exile all the time. Remember, we're not talking about the land, we're talking about consciousness. What is the evil inclination makes me or want to make me feel? It, that to put me into Egypt. So is Tsarut Ain is they call it, you know, is a narrow eye, which means, you know, like when uh, when somebody eats a lot and says, Oh, you have a big eye, right? This is the idea of narrow eye, which means you're looking at someone in such a small way. That's Egypt. When you're getting cold, when you're freezing, that's Egypt. 
When you're stingy with someone or with money or greedy about something, that is Egypt. You are in Egypt. That's a not a natural state of our soul. Our soul, our good inclination, it's wider, it's bigger, it's hosting a lot. This is very small, very, very little, very stingy. That's Egypt. So you know, when are you in exile? In moments like that, because we are not always like that. It's like occasion or triggered in certain way. So obviously, uh, even if you have all the right reasons to be this way, it's still not the right reason to be in exile. So this is where we're at uh, uh, in this week. Now, what happened? When you're going into Egypt and you stay there a little bit longer than what you should, even not even one second or one minute, if you stay longer, then what's happening? Comes Moses and says, okay, I'm going to bring plague to get you out of there. Therefore, anytime you stay in your Egypt, anytime you stay in in the smallness, you are actually creating a path of plagues that comes one by one to get you out of there, not to, to hurt you, to get you out of there. For example, they say 10 plagues in Egypt, but when you read it literally, it says 10 eser makot. Makah is strike. It's not a plague, it's a strike. And we know from the Kabbalistic deeper concept that we're talking about this, you know, binding by the striking. So for example, the strike, if I clap my hand, right? That clap, right, is a strike. But that creates a bind or, you know, a, a, a create a third element, which is, a, a, you know, a clap, right? You hear the sound. That's the, there's a third element that happened from that. The same thing when somebody stays in their Egypt, eventually they're dragging themselves into a reality of makot, uh, striking. Imagine, <laughs> I shared earlier this week, you know, everybody have a, uh, they're talking about everybody have ADD. I, 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 I don't know, you know, they all, trust me, if I sit with someone, or you sit with someone that have ADD and they on the phone and this and that, if you smack them, do you think they're going to be also distracted or like, oh, what's happening? What happened? What, 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 right? Everybody gets straightened immediately as soon as you smack them, right? Physically, right? Oh, what, what is that for? That's what people are waking up. People not waking up by themselves. They rather stay ADD, they call it. Now everybody have excuses. Oh, I'm HDAD and I'm DDC and I'm BBC and I'm AB, ABD. All kind of, uh, I don't say it's excuse, but I'm saying, yes, that's a condition right now. It was always there. But we were so, you know, less distracted. So now there's a lot of this. So does it mean that that should stay this way? That's Egypt. That's Egypt. A person lack of focus, lack of, it's, it's, it's all over the place. Then one doesn't need to be surprised when he gets smacked, meaning uh, something in life come and shake in them. Right? Oh, why it should be this way? Why? 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 Yeah, because you didn't wake up for the longest time. You've kept fell into Egypt again and again. You stay in there. So the care and the love of the Creator for us is to send us with Moses. Moses, the voice of reasons. Moses, the voice of, of light. That is our Moses. You need to learn that in this week, it's starting the conversation between your Moses and your Pharaoh. You know, Pharaoh is called Pao'o. Pao'o. Next week, we're going to speak more about it. It's in the next couple of weeks. But remember, we're not talking about Pharaoh in Egypt. We're talking about our Pharaoh. 
Pharaoh actually in, in, literally means paro, which is orif, the same word as orif, which is the back of your neck. That's paro. Does anybody here care about their back of the neck? Anybody? <laughs> well, how much? Well, I really, really love the back of my neck. You know, all day long. No, nobody even really, nobody. But it really is a major thing, right? Sometimes the neck hurts. Sometimes, you know, somebody smacks you, smacks you in the back of your neck, right? That's when, the, the, when Pharaoh, when Paro, right, is attacking us and he's controlling us. Eventually, a smack, right? A makkah, a plague, that's makkah, has to come. So the argument between Moses comes to Pharaoh this week, Pharaoh hardened his heart, or the Creator hardened the heart of Pharaoh, and Pharaoh doesn't want to send them away. In this week, we have seven plagues that we're reading about. These are not seven plagues, but seven layers of removal of negativity. When somebody is falling into a negative place, it means that they're using the system of what we call the Ma'arechet Atuma, the impure system, the system of the Egyptian, right? Which is all 1%, which is all, you know, manipulation, which is all idols. That's how we're managing ourselves when we're using that system. What is idol? Quick fixes. Uh, you know, running after people, saviors that come to save us, you know, hopeful, wishful thinking. That is the system of Paro in Egypt. That's what it is. Quick fixes, magic, all kind of like manipulation, all kind of stuff like that. You know, you lose weight in 60 days and you're healthy in one pill and blah, 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 all of those. That is constantly trying to enter. But when you're using that system for a while, one year, two years, one minute, that depends what. Therefore, each one of those plagues or each one of those strike is striking what we call not the positive side of you, but using that system that create chaos or create limitation in our life, Egypt, in our life. And, and, and if you're not going to get smacked, if you're not going to get that, you're still using the system of the negative side. Because it has the same power. Because, let's say, for example, the first one was blood. Right? Moses come and everything turned into blood. And they came, right? The, the Egyptian uh, sorcerers. And they did the same thing. So everybody said, oh... Yeah, but they did it in a trick. They did it in a, in a deceiving way, right? Moses did it for real. How do we know? A lot of stuff that, that happened, and the weirdest thing is, if I drink a cup of water, an Egyptian come and, and I give him my cup of water, he holds the cup of water, for him it turns into blood. He give it back to me, it turns into water, right? Again, it's not blood and water. We're going to get into it a little bit, but... Yes, they could do that. The negative side have the same almost strength as the light. Therefore, we want to be able to understand that every time you're using it, maybe you get what you want, but then you're dragging yourself to a plague. And only that can get you out of there. So again, Moses come to Pharaoh, let my people go. He says, no. Play coming in, everybody suffering. He calls Moses, yeah, please, I forgot, you know, what happened, you know. Let them go. Right? He stopped the plague. Pharaoh see there's no chaos. Everything is gone. Okay. I'm not letting, any, I'm not letting, letting anybody go. Right? This is us. This is the way we are. Chaos is striking. I'll do anything. Seems like it's past. Right? It's okay. Not stress, right? Like we, we, we saw a lot of us, a lot of people, 
October 7, woke up like never before. Never before. I, I haven't seen spirit like that for many, many years. What happened now? It's three months later, three and a half months later. You think people in the same energy? People in the same passion? People in the same desire to change and to be together? That's the sad part of the reality. Okay? This is us. This portion is exactly uh, the story of us, between us and our own evil inclination. So then, as uh, this is from the Baal Shem Tov, one of the beautiful Kabbalists, you know, he says that the word uh, Vaera, this is the name of the portion, Vaera, and, 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 and God was you know, shown to Abraham, Isaac, and, and Jacob, you know, and, and, and he tells Moses, that's where the, I'm the Lord who, who, who shown to Abraham, Yitzchak, and Yaakov. But what is this Vaera? Vaera is the word Or. If you switch the letter Vaera, it's the Or. Or Aleph. Aleph, Aleph represents the light of the Creator. Right? Ki El More Aleph Alufo Shel Olam. The first Aleph represents the light of the Creator. Or is light. So we know that within this week, this tremendous light comes in, even, even though it's darkness, right? It's darkness. The, the, Moses bringing uh, frogs all over, blood, everything, everybody cannot drink, you know, and all of those plagues. I'm going to go into it in a second, but it doesn't feel feels light. Imagine, you know, anybody felt light when uh, COVID happening, right? Not the, not the world, right? People who understand the spiritual significance, yes. But a lot of people didn't see it. We don't see things as, as light. So, <clears throat> this is what is the Creator comes to Moses, tells him, listen... This is the light that was revealed the same way to all the, you know, our lineage, right? So this is the, 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 the weak energy is really about, you know, the Creator is revealed to us way closer right now in this week. What do we need to do? Right? Get out of Egypt. Let's be convinced this week. I want to get out. Some people don't know that they need to get out of Egypt because they don't know that they are in Egypt. That's, the, the, that's regardless of the, the problem of getting them out. All of us who know that we are in Egypt every other day, <clears throat> we don't need to get convinced that there is Egypt, that I'm in Egypt. But it's to get out, that's the problem. And not to get back in. Right? So, as I said before, we have a tremendous opportunity in this month to use it to, to bring ourselves complete cleansing in, in order for us not to get into Egypt because the, the plague or the striking, right, create cleansing. So that's why, it's like for example, you know, I always uh, give the example, you know, when we were a kid, uh, my mom, through your mom, in, in, that, in that time, we never had a vacuum, right? We have to take the carpet of the house, right? If you have a carpet in the, in the living room, you put it on the balcony or on the fence, right? And you take a broom, it's not a broom, but it's like a stick, and you hit the carpet, right? It's seemingly like, why are you hurting the carpet? No, every time you hit, a lot of dust comes out, right? A lot of dirt comes out. Or you flip it and you step on it, right? Who heard that in order to clean it, you have to try to hit it, right? Same thing. We don't know that any time we get hit, chaz v'shalom, or, or strike by something, it's because of cleansing that there's no other way to clean you. That's the only way. So, yes, but why now? Yeah, because it was coming in small doses for the whole year. You didn't get the message. Doesn't get it, doesn't get it, doesn't get it. Okay. <laughs> Then he wakes up. And he wakes up. And, and my friend, we have the privilege of being in this type of environment of working with people, not just myself, many of the teachers that are here for many, many years. We already see the cycles, of course, for ourselves, 
But with students that we see, I mean, I feel bad. You know, you don't know that that's... We already know. It's not that we are prophet. We, we see. You don't get out of Egypt. A plague is coming. It's not... Again, it's sad to see it this way. I mean, I'm actually seeing what's happening right now in Israel, and, and I'm not so certain that everybody got the message. And... And 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 Chaz Shalom, it can create another path of worse than that. Worse than that, Chaz Shalom. So let's awaken us, get us out of the exile of Egypt. What is the few things that we can do this week that can shed some light into that? One is to look at, at the plague in two ways. One, it's a cleansing. Second is vaccination, not to fall back again, right? So it's not enough when somebody got burned, right, uh, from fire, right? So the burn, the fire, is obviously hurt the skin, right, or give pain. But it's also create a warning for that individual never get closer to fire, right? This here... That plague is a removal of chaos and at the same time give you vaccination to not fall back into it. That is the gift of this week. A lot of us sometimes it's just a cure, right? Uh, COVID, <laughs> going back to that. People went and got uh, shots. <clears throat> and then you see them getting uh, sick. So wait, wait a second, how did you get sick, right? Oh, because it's a vaccination, not a cure, and blah, 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 and all the story, right? Here, we have the healing of whatever the negativity we fell into, which is that's the cleansing, and then you get vaccination, which is <clears throat> not to fall back into it. So let's quickly run through the seven plague. Seven plague in this week and three the next week. Okay? Obviously, there's a reason why it's like that, but it's, it's, it's not for now. So if we take the first one was blood, dam. Dam is, the, is, as I said before, for the Egyptian is blood, for the Israelite is water. The same thing in your life. <coughs> what is the idea? The idea that we need to raise our consciousness to a place where the illusionary world, that's why when you're looking at, uh, at the plague, if you learn Kabbalah, you know that there is a, the tree of life. And the tree of life is from Keter, Chokhmah, Bina, all the way down to Malchut, which represents this world. When you're talking about the plague, you're talking about from Malchut, from the world here, Climbing up all the way to Keter. This is a completely different order. Therefore, it comes in form of strike or play, right? Because it needs to be awakened. Every time you, are, you, you come from below to above, it needs to be a greater awakening. <clears throat> so that awakening that they have, which is like, how can it be? The, it's all illusion, right? This is blood, this is water. I put it here, it becomes blood. I put it here, it becomes water. That is the, the craziness that they need to experience to see that eventually, and we need to see, that the world of illusion is, 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 is all illusion, right? This is a table. It's the same thing as the glasses. No, it's not the same. This is plastic. This is wood. At the, at the level of the spirit, it's the same level. It's the same light, right? My body and the table have the same, same, same thing. It's the same. Everything is the same thing. Everything is one over here. No. I'm better than them. She is better than her. This uh, curtain is better than this curtain. <coughs> this chair is more... Pri That's everybody lives by this reality. Therefore, it's hard for us to understand what does it mean creator? What does it mean light? Because we see reality fragmented. So the first plague is to get rid of the illusion of fragmentation, the illusion that everything is different, and to connect to the re true reality that everything is light. Everything is light. 
This person is from the light. This person is the creator. This person is the same thing. That's part of what we need in order to bring what we call the complete elevation in our life. And again, <clears throat> you take the next one, right? Because dam, by the way, dam is blood. But Adam is human. So when you add the letter Aleph, right? It means that the plague of blood brought down the letter Aleph, which represents the light of the Creator. That everything is light. That is the idea. Second step is the Tzfardea. The, so the first one was what we call Malchut. The second one is Tzfardea, which is the frogs. <coughs> That represent the Sfirah above, which is Yesod. <coughs> Tzfardea is a frog. That's how you say the word. But it's also the word from the Rashi says is the Tzafra de Nahiru, which means uh, uh, good light or good morn in a way. So it's also, we know, that... Uh, uh, um, when we say in a light or nahir or, 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 or tzafra is like a, a, a morning or a good morning, right? Or, or a day of light. That's what they call it, right? But what does it got to do with the, the, the you know, with tzfardea? Because tzfar de'a. De'a, if you break the word to two, you get the word de'a, which is consciousness. And tzafra is... Light or creating or mourning or, you know. And the idea is that we need to have, what is this for there? This for there, the frog heard the creator jump to fire. They jumped. The frog went everywhere. They were everywhere. They went into their ears. They went into their mouth. They know, the frog went anywhere in Egypt. And they made such a loud noise, Right? A lot of us don't have the consciousness that the light of the Creator is everywhere. And so forth. We don't have consciousness. That is part of the problem. What is the idea? Everything that was looking light to something, to the Israelite, would look and sound darkness to the Egyptian. How many of us have that? Right? We always give the example, Ravash, like the, the example of the, the bat and the rooster. They're arguing. Right? The rooster says, oh, you're living at night. You don't see anything. And the, and, the, and, and the bat says, what are you talking about? You're living in the dark. You know, I don't understand why you wake up so early. You know? Uh, uh, why, you go, why are you doing that? It's, it's so much darkness. Right? Go argue. A lot of us have that argument. What is light? What is not really light? Right? What is darkness and what is that? So we receive in this section as well a vaccination against darkness that seems like light. Okay? And also, we need to understand in this section, as I said before, when you use your body consciousness for the sake of getting fulfillment, right? Or even sexual encounter behavior also can be cleansed in this, in this reading. Because a lot of people using it for the sake of getting attention <coughs> or getting, getting uh, energy or getting uh, relief or whatever it is. And that is uh, not what it's meant to be. The third one is called kinim, which is lice, which is come the level of a hod. And level of a hod, of course, is... Uh, is the idea of appreciation, right? But what does it cleanse this? What is this strike of lies? It says that every speck, every speck, every dust, every speck became lies. Right away it transformed. So imagine all the dust in, the, in, in Egypt became a, a, a lies. And it went everywhere, drive them nuts. This is the one thing that they cannot do anything about it, right? Meaning, it's considered to be a very, very small animal, right? There's big animal, but this is the concept of small and big. A very tiny, small animal 
drive me crazy. Imagine, you know, that kids, sometimes in the kindergarten or whatever, if they have hair, uh, they have itchy eyes, right? And you check for lice, right? And then it's like they have to be in the quarantine. Even if it's the smallest thing, it drives them crazy, right? When we were kids, we used to put on that uh, kerosene or, or whatever, uh, uh, fuel on that to burn it, right? So it's the idea of smaller versus uh, bigger, right? Then, then what, is it, what does it mean, smaller versus bigger? Let me, let me get it here. A lot of us have the consciousness in the 1% world of this is a big table, this is a small table. This is a big person, this is a small person. This is a big moment, this is a small moment. A lot of us are measuring and raising the importance of, what it, of us based on is it big or is it an important person or is it not such an important person. Small people or big people, you know? Big situations, small. Big money, small money. A lot of us live like that. Like that. that has to be removed because it's a, it's, this consciousness doesn't allow you to control the world of matter, right? So it might be something so nuclear. Like, for example, if somebody gets virus. Anybody saw corona, the virus, the virus uh, COVID? Anybody saw it? No, it's not even a microbe. You can't even see it, right? But it's controlling the entire world. So this is what we want to awaken here, to see the beauty in everything. The fifth one is what we call Netzach. Sorry. Four, sorry. So the fourth one is Arov. Arov is wild beast, that they call it. But also... What, is it, what are we getting in this, in this section? It's called uh, snakes and scorpions attack the entire nation, right? In general, this type of, 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 of plague meant to give us vaccination against uh, uh, diseases or plagues that comes from animals like what we experienced from COVID, and meant to give people protection from that. <coughs> if, again, if that's happening, like the bird flu and all of those things that, you know, or the cow, or the, 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 the whatever, I think it's salmonella in the egg, from the, I don't know, I don't remember what it is, but a lot of stuff like that, that, that diseases or plague that comes from animal. But this is in the 1%, but this, the literal spiritual significance of that is that each one of us have what we call four different kingdoms. The mineral, the vegetation, the animal, and the human. As long as a, <coughs> as a person not growing to become a human, he's always in what we call the animal kingdom. What does it mean? If you look at your life, how many times in your day or in your week you using or behaving like an animal? Like, I hope, I'm sure you recognize that on others. Wow, that's such an animalistic behavior, right? We all have it. It's very hard for us to say it about ourselves, but, you know, the way we eat, the way we do things, the way, eh, there's many, many things that we're using our animalistic desire. <coughs> not our human desire. And that's for, that's what we need to cleanse and receive vaccination so not to fall into that or get out of this animal. The fifth one is devil, which is <coughs> pestilence, which is uh, the livestock de uh, uh, of the Egyptian ran out or completely eradicate. And the Israelis, the Israelites didn't have uh, any of that issue, right? What is that? is a vaccination <coughs> against total destruction, collective destruction. So if a person is not waking up from a, a, a you know, from a small destructive things, a bigger destruction comes. <coughs> so a moment of chaos meant to awaken or to cleanse you 
and not to fall into a bigger chaos, right? So this is the idea. Here we're talking about the small individual uh, uh, chaos or destruction that, that people fall into it. For example, people allow themselves to be depressed, right? That is, that is, a, that is a collective pandemic, right? But anybody speaks about it like it's a pandemic? Any sp anyone speaks about loneliness as a pandemic? No. But individually, if I go and individually to people, yeah, they're lonely. Yeah, they're miserable alone. They're depressed, right? Yeah, but I'm, I'm depressing. If you not, each one of us, not individually, eradicate our de depression, our uh, 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 loneliness, by inserting ourselves to a community, be part, then it become a global pandemic. The <coughs> sixth one is called Shekhin, which is a level of Gvura, which is the boils. It's a little bacteria, but it's mostly about the skin, a skin disease. What is this skin? Imagine the entire skin was covered with chicken pox or even uh, uh, mosquito bites. Is the person can function? No. Itchy all day long, right? Bothered, itchy, dry skin, you know, treatment, nothing, right? That's the shechit. But what does it cleanse? We know every time it comes to the skin, it represents evil tongue. People speaking bad, people gossiping for no reason, or even if for a reason. People putting down others so they feel good. People say mean things to control others. People say th using the words... In a negative way, it creates what we call skin disease. Because why? A talk like that is just external. Because if you would know that that person is the, is, is the creator, you will never speak to them this way, or disrespect them this way, or evil, evil tongue or, uh, speak about them. Because you know, I'm not going to... No, I see exactly why. Because we look at people externally, we allow ourselves to speak bad about them. Or about this world, Right? Some people speaking so bad about the creator of this world. Some people speaking, you know, bad about this reality. Because they don't see. They don't see the depth. They don't see the beauty. So Shekhin, boil, is the idea of, of, of obviously healing or, or cure from that type of disease and get the vaccination not to fall speaking bad about people because it just put you down. The seventh one is called Barad, which is the hail, right? Uh, Barad is in the level of Chesed. Chesed is water, mercy is water. But here the hail came like the water became like ice. And it's, when they fall, it's not really uh, pleasant. It's not like water fall out of heaven, wow, we feel great, right? It's rocks of, of Chesed, which is sometimes the idea of, of, of being merciful is also sometimes being tough, right? It's also water, but it's tough. Sometimes tough love <coughs> help us not to fall into a collective destruction. The hail, obviously, it's also the word dever. Dever is boil. But if you take the word de dever, sorry, is the... Is the um, Pestilence, right? But it's the same letter as barad. You switch the word. So we learn that pestilence is a local, you know, individual chaos. And barad represents, right, coming from everyone gets suffer, right? So even, <coughs> even if you're not such a bad person, hail falling on you and destroy, destroy your property, destroy your cars, destroy this, right? Or sometimes hurting you. Even if you are a good person. That's what we want to prevent. So how? By meaningful, strong actions of sharing and mercy. Actions of kindness that could be shaken up how kind that person were with me. Right? This is what we want to receive as a vaccination here. So remember... All, <coughs> every time 
Every time we are in exile, meaning we are, our consciousness is in exile, every time there's galuta dad, when there's no consciousness, right? I mean exile. You enter to a reality of awakening, which is from malchut to keter, from below, boom, you get smacks to wake up. Right? That's, that should be all the time. So in this week, please, look at all those levels we shared. Repeat them. Listen to that. See in your life where today, tomorrow, this week, you can get a, a glimpse of what needs to be changed or what needs to be removed and what needs to be worked on. <clears throat> Remember, Moses comes to Pharaoh this week. Our Moses is very loud right now. Let us hear the voice of Moses that comes to remove the Pharaoh, remove the Egypt from our life. This is what it is. This is what it is. You know, Pharaoh wants us to stay in the illusion. Moses wants to remove the illusion. <clears throat> uh, as of now, we're pretty good with that seven different layers of consciousness and few ideas that we spoke. Next week we're going to talk uh, the rest of them and, and, and more about it. But I want to send you with the I, you know, awakening, I would say. It's the new moon of Shabbat, Aquarius. There's big secrets that wants to be revealed. If I stay in exile, I can't reveal secrets. If I stay disconnected, I can't reveal secrets, right? Sometimes <coughs> we know there's the month of Tevet and there's the month of Shvat. Tevet is Capricorn. If you hear the word Tevet, start with the letter Tet, which indicates secret, right? So he says <coughs> that in this month of Capricorn, there's a tremendous amount of secrets that are concealed, right? So sometimes when you realize there's a secret here, it's because it's not clear, right? Shvat is the letter Tet comes in the end. So if you do the work, all of a sudden secrets been revealed to you. You're not going to see that, that this is secret. Something that is so, you know, looks like benign, looks like unimportant, the biggest secret of your life. This is this month. Unexpected. <coughs> so, obviously, if we bring ourselves out of exile, I'm sure we will hear our messages. I'm sure if each one of us will reduce the intensity of our Pharaoh, the voice of Moses, the voice of the light will be much stronger. Thank you so much. Have a great uh, month, a lot of blessings, and we'll see you soon.